What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Another Friday, another episode of Why Are We Bullish? As my lovely wife passes me up here. Uh, so we are kicking it off. I'm still on the road. Uh, I am here in Italy. Uh, we just got down to um, Sicily yesterday. Uh, so we're just settling into the new place. Internet connection seems all right here. So uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. Anyways, very excited for today's show. Again, we're coming at you live from, from Europe. So uh, I get to have guests on that uh, time zones wouldn't previously allow. Uh, so that's very exciting for me. We'll get everybody in here and uh, we'll be live in a second. Um, but of course, as I said, this is live, so anything can happen. Who knows? Maybe my internet connection ends up being wonky later. But uh, in those instances, I defer to my friend Bill here. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. If you have not already, like, subscribe, share, all those things that really do help a ton getting this show in front of more eyeballs. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Before we bring in our guests, uh, we'll take a quick look at where we are in the market right now. This is timechaincalendar.com. Uh, right now, we're sitting at $29,219 per coin. A single US dollar will pick you up uh, 3,422 sats. Uh, in terms of fees, it looks like we're sitting at around 14 sats per byte uh, for priority. Uh, if you're willing to wait a little bit, 10 sats per byte should do you. Um, and in terms of Bitcoin mined, 19.45 million of them, which is 92.61% of total supply have been mined. Shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're stacking sats and you've got some priorities in mind, like no KYC, peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, it's the place to be. You head there, you sign in with nothing more than an email address, scroll down, choose a currency, a payment method, an amount. And you're going to be able to view offers immediately. They also have peer-to-peer -peer lending in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. Check them out. Links are down below. Uh, of course, when you stack some sats, uh, you're going to want to secure it with some of the best hardware on the market. Cold Card Mark IV is my go-to. Love this device. Uh, but they do, CoinKite does a whole bunch of other awesome stuff that I use. Tap signers, sats card, block clock, open dimes, and uh, coming really soon, they've got the Cold Card Q1. That drops later this year. If you want to reserve it or check out anything else I mentioned, coinkite.com. Use code BTC Sessions uh, for 5% off. Uh, new sponsor of the show. In fact, we have a guest on uh, from Cedar, uh, but these guys are awesome. Uh, I got to meet, uh, well, well, we'll intro in a moment, but I got to meet uh, these guys whilst in Prague at BTC Prague. And uh, I got I got to tell you, sold it to me pretty well. Um, nonetheless, one of the most robust steel backups on the market. Again, the discs and the capsule and everything, it's just super resilient to water, fire, corrosion, basically anything you can throw at it. Um, and the starter pack, it comes with this massive mallet and everything, and you stamp in your full seed words and you number them and everything. It's robust as hell. Um, I'm going to do a video on the actual set of it, setup of it when I get back Uh across the pond. Uh, but look for that. Anyways, seedor.io. There's a link down below. You can also use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything. And uh, yeah, and Chris will be on the show today. So uh, excited to have him. Uh, now, I do want to say if you're looking to go beyond single SIG and dive into multi SIG, nunchuck.io has you covered. Uh, their assisted multi SIG uh, known as Honey Badger is awesome. I'm using it myself. Uh, basically, you set it up on a mobile device with things like tap signer, cold card, whatever other hardware that you may like. Um, very simple to get set up. It has baked in inheritance planning. Uh, and then on top of it, the whole thing is no KYC. You don't need to give up your private information to set it up and use it. So check them out, nunchuck.io. Last shout out of the show, Start9, Sovereign Computing Solution. Uh, you can host... A whole bunch of different stuff on here like i do you can host your bitcoin stack so 
Bitcoin Core, your Lightning node, mempool.space. You can also host your own data, files, passwords, photos, Nostra Relays, Nostra Clients, all kinds of great stuff. They have entry level plug and play devices and they have all the way up to what I'm hosting, which is uh, the Start uh, Server Pure, which is a beast of a machine. So check them out, start9.com. Enough of my rambling, guys. Uh, let's get the stars of the show in here. So I want to uh, welcome to the show. We've got uh, Eurodale, we've got uh, Jan, and we've got Chris. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for being here. And uh, I think uh, a quick round of intros, who are you, what do you do, are in order. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll toss it to Eric first. Dude, welcome back. Uh, can you give yourself an intro? Thank you so much for having me again, uh, Ben. Um, thank, you for, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> so I'm Eurodale. I'm um, the organizer of the Northern Lightning Conference in uh, Norway the last time, but it's a rotating conference around the Nordics. And I'm the host of Bitcoin for Breakfast, um, which is a Bitcoin podcast in Scandinavia that has recently started broadcasting in English. So a great opportunity perhaps to say to the English audience that we are now live in English. Um, yeah, and then I raised three beautiful Bitcoiners. I guess those are my three main jobs. Awesome. <laughs> Bullish on Bitcoin babies. Glad to hear, man. And yeah. uh, and and we got to hang out a little bit in Prague as well. Uh, you have much more energy than me in the early hours of the morning. I don't know how you do it. So <laughs> awesome. Um, Jan, first time on the show. Thank you for uh, volunteering to come on here. Uh, you were recommended uh, by a good handful of people when I was asking. Uh, could you give yourself an intro? Hi, um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm Jan Wüstenfeld. For those who don't know me, uh, my background is in economics. I'm currently in the last weeks, months of my PhD, so I'm planning to hand in my thesis end of September and then hoping to start full time in the Bitcoin space, um, likely somewhere in the area of research related to Bitcoin mining with Terahash here in Germany. Um, currently, I'm more known in the Bitcoin space for macro research, on-chain analysis. Um, yeah, but I feel like in the future, it's more valuable to do some research on how can Bitcoin mining be integrated in um, production processes, et cetera. Um, yeah. Interesting. Awesome. Well, dude, I'm glad to have you again. Thanks for coming on. And, uh, and Chris, it's good to see you again. I think the last time I saw you online would have been uh, Swan did their, their, uh, what was it again? It was, is Hollywood Squares, uh, Pacific Bitcoin, some some kind of game show. I think it was your last day in Canada, and then you left for Europe because you were not uh, yeah awake at two a.m. <laughs> I, I was not. You were a trooper for what was the name that uh, Neil kept on giving you? It was Fabio, but uh, Fabio. I tried to. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Neil. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I wear one of Neil's uh, merch items just now. So shout out to Neil Jacobs and uh, my, my favorite podcaster. But yeah, to introduce myself, maybe to the general audience, my name's Chris. I co-founded Cedor, uh, a nice brand that you just uh, sponsored in the, in the beginning. And I'm building Satskeeper and I'm also on the advisory board of Terahash, which uh, Jan just mentioned. And yeah. I think uh, in this round, um, uh, Dale, how's your German? Should we should we switch the language? Mein, mein Deutsch ist ganz gut. Ich habe mein Deutsch gelernt jetzt in den letzten drei Jahren und Perfect. meine Kinder gehen yeah, auf den großen Schulen. Das ist natürlich. <laughs> yeah, I'm so screwed. I'm so screwed. I'll just let you guys take it from here. You've been here for weeks now, Ben. You must have picked yeah. up something. I know. I know. I've I've, I've got to work on it. Uh, well, I have the cheat code of having kids that go to German schools. So even though I've yes. only been there for three years, I've been unusually exposed to the German educational system. <laughs> well, awesome. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know uh, that I'll be able to keep up with you guys, but uh, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Either way, uh, I'm glad to have you guys. Thank you all for coming on. Um, anybody tuning in that's unfamiliar with the show, this is Why Are We Bullish? Really simple premise of the show. Each one of us comes with a reason why we're bullish on Bitcoin. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be price related. In fact, I'd say on this show, it sometimes seldom is. Um, 
depending on the guest, but uh, it can be anything. It can be a news item. It can be a personal experience. It can be uh, a device. It could be a, a, an application, just something that you're currently excited about in Bitcoin. The flow of the show, really simple. Somebody is going to get a chance to drop their reason why they're bullish, explain it, rant about it, whatever it may be. Number two, all together, we're going to riff on that reason, discuss questions, comments, whatever it may be. And then third, we're going to rotate to the next person until we've all had a turn. So reason, riff, rotate, simple. Um, I'm going to get us started today uh, really quick uh, with my reason uh, for being bullish here. And um, my reason for being bullish here is I often have these counterintuitive uh, reasons for for being bullish. And I'm going to pull up an article here. Um, and it was uh, it was a, a piece of legislation that was just uh, that was just thrown through the Senate in, in the US. And and um, and it's not a favorable one. It's not one that's that's uh, uh, super great when it comes to uh, when, when it comes to um, uh, Bitcoin privacy in particular, um, but more or less, it was a, a piece that went just went through the Senate this week, and surprisingly, it, in, it involves uh, Senator Cynthia Loomis. So those um, that are over here in Europe that have no idea who she is, she's been very favorable towards Bitcoin the last little bit, but. Um, you know, you know, she's been at a bunch of conferences. She's been present at at a lot of things, and and has been lauded by a number of Bitcoiners as like a, a positive force for Bitcoin. And then another person that was part of this bill was uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who a lot of people will be familiar with as uh, strictly like anti Bitcoin. You know, hates it, doesn't want it to succeed, thinks it's. A bunch of shadow, shadowy super coders that are just going to destroy the planet. Um, so, you've got these two individuals and others as well that basically signed off of this on this bill. Now, this bill was was actually just additional crap thrown into like the another military budget, you know, national security kind of bill that was going through. But what they're trying to do is is effectively they want. AML, KYC, all of these like know your customer, take all this information to apply to things like wallet providers, um, uh, anybody that is uh, running uh, lightning nodes, regular nodes, anybody that's basically anybody that has their hands on really anything to do with uh, confirming um, uh, actually relaying like and, and miners all, all of this stuff they they're basically trying to impose legacy rules upon upon bitcoin now why the hell would i be bullish about this i'm i'm bullish because i think the end game of this ends up being similar to the end game of the china ban on mining and what I mean is, we're, we're, while some may try to implement it, um, we're, we're in the midst of the world's kind of figuring out that Bitcoin answers to no one. And I'm not saying that they won't try and make examples of people and, and, and try and make it hard. But what I'm saying is, at the end of the day, or the week or the year or whatever it may be, whatever the time frame is, Bitcoin is unaware of those laws and Bitcoin will continue to function. I do think that they can make it a huge pain in the ass for Bitcoiners in the interim and companies and all of this stuff. But I think that down the line, it's, it's going to shine a light on the fact that governments can't control Bitcoin. If anything... Um, if anything, the, the China ban on Bitcoin mining showed the world that you can't ban Bitcoin mining, like 20% of the hash still in, in China, like at last check, at last I heard anyways. 
Um, which means all of that stuff is just flying under the radar and that, you know, people are just slipping money to anybody that comes up on a, a rural town using hydro that happens to have a big mining installation. Like government is not able to, to get a handle on, on all that stuff. I think we're going to see something similar when it comes to, all right, all you wallet providers better KYC every single person who downloads this thing off the app store, we're already starting to see people prep for stuff like this. We're seeing kind of the, um, uh, we're seeing people trying to make uh, progressive web apps cool again. <laughs> we're seeing projects like Mutiny Wallet um, come out and say like, hey, how about we don't make app stores a single point of failure? Um, and I think you're going to see this. They also honed in a little bit on privacy related software. They were talking about uh, like the whole thing was geared towards um, evil people, money laundering, like all the, you know, the terrorists and everything that are, that are all using Bitcoin because that's the only people that use it. Um, that, that was a lot of the language around this bill. And so I think, again, what we're going to see is, is point after point um, of, you can't control Bitcoin. And on top of that, instead of being able to brush it off as, well, you know, that was, you know, that was China or that was just this country that tried to do it, whatever. Like when the U.S. tries to go after Bitcoin and it still doesn't work, that's when a lot of eyebrows go, oh, wow, this actually this actually uh, is government resistant. Um and so, yeah, I, I think that's kind of we're at the beginning of that stage. I don't know how crazy the U.S. gets with this. I don't know if they just try to it kind of seems like they're going through the, the, the kind of, quote unquote, friendly regulation phase where they're going to say this is OK as long as you do A, B and C um, instead of China just blanket saying this isn't allowed at all. I think the U.S., uh, a lot of the regulators there at least recognize like, oh, the, there'll be egg on our face if we just outright ban it. Um, but I still think that it's not going to be overly successful trying to um, get people to stop using Bitcoin in a sovereign way. And as a call to action, anybody watching this show, I'm going to say you should learn learn how to bit use Bitcoin in as much of a sovereign way as possible, whether it be obtaining non KYC Bitcoin and having Bitcoin, you know, even if you do have some KYC corn, learn how to go about getting Bitcoin in a way where your name isn't in a database, be familiar with that process so that if you need to use it, you can, or maybe you just have a, a, a little nest egg off to the side that nobody knows about, um, you know, learning how to use wallets, learning how to use wallets that maybe you didn't get on the app store um familiarizing yourself with that hardware all that kind of stuff um and then again privacy services it's worth learning how to use coin join and using other things like that um so nonetheless uh i just wanted to kind of point out that i i think we're in those early stages of people realizing that even the u.s government cannot control bitcoin um and that'll be exciting when that's common knowledge. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up to everybody for comments uh, wherever we want to take it. Number one, I guess I'll throw out there: Do you agree, uh, or or do you worry that um, this could be much worse than I'm I'm anticipating? Well, it reminds me of sort of like a related argument about uh, what <laughs> to use the classic American framing of what is money. Um, the universal medium of exchange is supposed to be exactly that, universal, and there's supposed to be an absolutely no limit to our demand for it. So unless we put artificial obstacles in it, we always want more money. There is no limit to the demand for this one commodity. So every time you set up some kind of attempt to increase surveillance or reduce privacy or introduce capital controls or in other ways try to put roadblocks up, uh, whether it is to control your existing fiat system and make it difficult for people to leave that system or if it is to make bitcoin hard and heavy to use what you actually do is to make your own money less money so that the attack on bitcoin or this attempt to make bitcoin difficult for people actually just ends up applying to your own money it's a bit like the argument against 
heavy regulation that's designed to attack the rich when the rich are the only ones who actually have the resources to avoid the regulation, leading that regulation to only harm the poor. And it's, it's sort of the same thing happening to, to money, that since Bitcoin has this capacity, in a sense, to, to transcend uh, local violence <laughs> in, in the form of, of law um, and enforcement of it, uh, it becomes, in a sense, this, this, uh, um, this the, the rich thing that is meant to be attacked, but in reality, the, the, the law or the attempt to attack it will only end up harming your own weak currency. Um, yeah, just uh, just uh, some uh, not exactly the same argument, but definitely sort of that the lines that I started thinking about from what you were saying. Yeah, I, I think I this is that. just more anybody. You know, old, old women yelling at clouds. This is you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you, Ben. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and there is no such thing as uh, bad press. You know, uh, people start to notice. Uh, could you have imagined that Bitcoin would be such a big topic like four years ago that there's so many candidates now that are co-opting Bitcoin talking points that people desperately now uh, yeah, try to run uh, legislation that, I mean, from a standpoint, like it's not even feasible or practical. You can't, hmm. like in Germany, we would call a piece of legislation like this a, a, a Rohrkrepierer. Uh, translates to like, I don't know, a barrel burst, like something that is dead on arrival. Like you can't, I mean, you don't like shout out to Anna from Hoddle Hoddle, your sponsor, get non-KYC Bitcoin, just sign up with an email, uh, do UT UTXO management in your wallet. And what we've seen, as you mentioned, with the progressive uh, web apps um, recently with uh, Will Kassaran, with Damus, um, Apple said, oh, you can't have SAPs anymore. And uh, like he made one of the biggest companies in the world flinch because the, the power of these uh, decentralized, ungovernable protocols is just so threatening to their model that, you know, it's, you can't do anything against it. Like China, they're still mining. Uh, Kuwait just now, uh, like they had a similar uh, pass of legislation. You can't have Bitcoin. I mean... <sighs> It's a technology that's here to stay, and it's impossible to yeah, prevent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I must say I agree with you guys. The first thing that came to mind for me was like, how are they going to enforce this? I mean, of course they can make it more difficult and like order app stores to only allow KYC wallets on chain. But I mean, in the end, it's it's like on chain and you can download whatever you app you want on your computer laptop and yeah I, i'm not really seeing how they are going to enforce this maybe um it would increase people using kyc wallets which is in itself of course bad because um it makes traceability easier for governments um on chain analysis companies etc but um yeah i'm not really seeing how they are going to enforce this long term. And you also get this kind of game theoretical element going, of course, where whatever, if you imagine sort of the birth of the internet, that whatever nation decided that, hey, we're going to turn the internet into a directory where it's like limited exactly what you can access and so on. Obviously, you then just don't set up the basic framework to be able to create the complexity that the internet was to become. And so any nation that attempts this will just shoot themselves in the leg. And even though that could be satisfying for a while because of the information control you would achieve, uh, over time you would see the smaller nations around you that just allowed for an open internet benefit so tremendously from that that it, it doesn't make any sense. And I don't think we saw many nations, at least in the West, make serious attempts in the first 20 years mm -hmm. to stop a relatively free internet from happening. Although that's happened later. <laughs> Yeah. What I'm wondering is, do we, again, in, in a world where, you know, let's say this becomes kind of the pervasive technique where they say, if you want a, a Bitcoin wallet in the app store, then it's full KYC. Um, does this become kind of what we've seen with torrents versus, you know, streaming services where, where, you know, a, a, at first, you know, everybody was torrenting everything and then Netflix comes along and everybody's kind of, okay, here's my credit card information. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pay everything. But then it kind of got to a point where now it's onerous for different reasons than, than Bitcoin would be onerous with this, these regulations. But, you know, it became, okay, well, now I've got 
you know, Netflix and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and and Hulu and all whatever the hell else streaming services. And now people are like, God, I'm just going to start torrenting again. <laughs> like, is that where like people comply to a certain point and then it gets such a pain in the ass? It basically is legacy finance all over again. And then they say, I'm just going to get a progressive web app and just use Bitcoin. Like, I, 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 is that the trajectory we're maybe on? What do you think? It's ebb and flow, I would say. Like, uh, as you mentioned, like, we were pirates, and then, oh, it's so much more convenient to use Netflix, and then they overdid it, and now you have, like, the same amount, like, your cable bill before, if you have, like, 10 different streaming services, and then, ah, uh, maybe this, you know, torrent doesn't look so bad now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the technology, like, people are not stupid, and they will uh, decide to go with the uh, better way eventually like uh, there, there have been successful attempts uh, of, of stifling in the technology in like certain parts like we don't see north korea being like at the forefront of the internet development but uh, in general like worldwide um, i think there will be hubs those that adopt bitcoin earlier will then have an advantage later on as opposed yeah. to other countries that you know the very few like countries would argue that north korea has been like successful at straining the internet they've been successful at straining the internet but as a result they can be seen from space as a dark place so it's like success is really like okay what what is the thing that we're measuring success by here yes they don't have good internet but uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's subjective yes yeah. <laughs> from kim jong-un's standpoint quite successful <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly even though they are very advanced in bitcoin hackability um so, well, like, that kind of goes to the argument here, right? That like you can probably make Bitcoin really difficult to use in your jurisdiction and probably stifle all kinds of innovation and make it persecute individuals and go the full nine yards, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, you are probably going to be visible from space in 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> I mean, it'll be... Know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll be able to see the you know lightning network transaction graph and it'll just be the the blank spot. the black hole yeah yeah <laughs> and i don't know that's probably not like what i would campaign on yeah um, I, what, I, we mentioned earlier in the conversation here uh, i think chris you brought up uh you know the the number of politicians that are are kind of like using bitcoin talking points to try and turn heads get votes all that kind of stuff um what i'm waiting for is when politicians are calling each other out over claiming to be Bitcoiners, but actually <laughs> passing crap legislation in the background. To do when somebody says, you said you were into Bitcoin, but then you passed this KYC AML crap. That You're not a real Maxi. Yeah, I'm <laughs> more toxic than you are. are. Oh, I yeah, can't wait I'm for waiting this to for come people comment. in Congress to debate BIPs. Oh, you're, you're against BIP 317. Yeah. <laughs> That's not congruent with my... A jurisdiction <laughs> <laughs> that'll be great because like right now it's just like i like bitcoin and then everybody you know yay and you know there's a bunch of people celebrating um i i you know i shouldn't say famous that, but... hodler admits he will sell at the million yeah <laughs> this secret recording at a dinner party political scandal yeah. <laughs> yeah. Presidential Hold. candidate Bobby Kennedy uses ledger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holds 25% tether. Not even all in. 50% is on exchange. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. I think um, that'll be interesting. I'm, I, I, I do think that there will be a degree of, because so many people are, are kind of throwing their hat in the ring of saying, I think this is important. Uh, to to protect um, monetary sovereignty in some way, shape, or form, but I think it's only a matter of time before there's arguments over people saying that versus what they actually do. Um, it'll be fun to get there because <laughs> it'll be it'll be Bitcoin Twitter, but you know, on C-SPAN or something. <laughs> I mean, there, there is a historic an analogy for exactly what should happen here. Uh, and it's been pointed out not just by me, but a bunch of other Bitcoiners before the, the parallels between the Reformation and our own time. And when it comes to this point where it sort of goes mainstream, it's not like the Reformation became some kind of unified movement. In fact, they went for congregations and split into endless different interpretations of mm -hmm. what this meant. The one thing they did agree on was that you didn't need a third party to negotiate your relationship with the truth. Mm -hmm. You can have a peer-to-peer -peer relationship with God. They basically agreed that you need a Bitcoin. 
you, you have a protocol for a peer-to-peer -peer relationship with the truth, and then you can have a million other interpretations. And they did never, we never got a Protestant Pope or something like this, right? There was yeah. no unified movement behind it. In a sense, like when we say there is no Bitcoin community, that's kind of yeah. what we mean. Yeah. You know, it's just a bunch of different citadels, a bunch of different congregations. Yeah. So that might be like informative of what we can see. We can probably expect to see a lot of people share a unity over the notion that you don't need third parties to do these peer-to-peer -peer transactions, but you may then see endless amounts of interpretations of what that means epistemologically, yeah. morally, aesthetically. Yeah. We already see kind of these these splinters of of Bitcoiners of even just like focal points, what people rally around. Like you've got the, all the privacy guys, right? Like there's there's and there's the privacy wars. Uh, you've got, you know, the like the the lightning maxis, everybody and then and then the like on chain maxis where it's like, no, everything on chain, every, you know, lightning's trash, like any sort of. Um, and then you've got people that uh, have like a nuanced view of trade offs that might want to use like an e cash style system or might want to use liquid or things like that. And then others that are like if it's not on chain or lightning and and even just like you, you have these. I think you're going to have specializations of even when it comes to types of content in and around Bitcoin, because now it's real, it's a bit more difficult to just say, I have a Bitcoin show or a Bitcoin newsletter. It's like, uh, no, you need to, you need to specialize or have some sort of like unique nuanced take on things or like be specific about privacy or lightning or layer two or mining, or you're, you're kind of seeing, Eric, like you were saying, like you're seeing this this splintering within Bitcoin right now, um, and I, I yeah, I think that'll that'll further uh, happen as as people come into Bitcoin. You're gonna have the politicians that are like, yeah, we need sound money, but only if it's KYC AML um, <laughs> and backed it just backing the dollar because we want the dollar to be there because that will never get rug pulled again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, I think all these citadels, though, they're, they're helpful. Like, I mean, you mentioned like, oh, there's Wasabi and Samurai and Join Market and all these things that there's a lot of infighting. But um, there's this analogy where you have like this drum and you put like just rocks from your garden in and you put like some water and some grit and mm -hmm. those rocks, they, they brush up against each other. And then when you open the, the barrel after like a day or so, like you have like shiny polished pebbles that look mm -hmm. much nicer. Because all of these ideas, like there's always some some form of compromise that is then achieved, and then the entire like ecosystem, yeah, improves. Like yeah. there's so many ideas going around, and uh, I'm too far on the left bell curve curve to really contribute to that. But I really like enjoy like reading all these Twitter spats when people much much smarter than suggest stuff, and then really nice ideas come along. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, no, that's I, I I think we'll be better for whatever happens again i think bitcoin as uh, as a system and as an idea is too resilient to fall to um the the singular sect of pro bitcoin but AYC, a kyc aml uh stooges that 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 will surely come down the pike um i i think it will remain resilient but there will be a, a subset of people that just you know to you know bow down and and just go along with it and they'll they'll strictly stay within the confines of what they're told that they can do and well i mean that that doesn't affect the rest of us that decide to use bitcoin as we always have so there you go anyways you guys have bitcoin i, I don't yeah <laughs> all right yeah i did lose i mean i was on a boat the other day yeah <laughs> there was an unfortunate accident i'm right near the beach too so what little I had left is gone as of this one. We went for a swim. Day. Yeah, it was too bad. Um, anyways, gentlemen, let's uh, let's do a rotation here. Uh, let's keep things rolling. By the way, everybody in the chat, thank you for being here. Uh, shout out to uh, uh, Max uh, Max Trotter. Uh, I see him in here uh, from time to time and uh, want to say hey. And Rand, of course. And then my long lost blonde tipped brother Nico from Simply Bitcoin was in. <laughs> in the chat as well uh we're still doing the show together while i'm on the road but uh anyways um let's rotate through um i'm gonna toss it to eurodale and uh I'll, I'll cue you up why are you bullish man 
Dude, I don't know if you've heard, but Ben is in Europe. <laughs> it's all over the news. And uh, yeah, the drums are chiming. Uh, no, you are in Europe. And uh, that is, in a sense, just like the last, the fact that you're doing the show from Europe, I think is really, really good uh, illustration of something I really felt on our continent in the last year. There is so much stuff that's been suddenly starting to happen. From We can first start with just the fact that there are local meetups happening in pretty much every little town in every fucking country mm -hmm. in 27 languages, <laughs> creating content and models and integrating with local histories and cultures and being in ways that could just never happen in that American bubble. And that's like just exploded in the last year. Mm -hmm. That gets me super bullish. That has then led to a plethora of some of the best fucking Bitcoin conferences on the planet. You and I were just in uh, Prague together, which was incredibly impressive. What they pulled off in a year there is world class, easily up there with any other conference in the world. And that was just, in a sense, the latest in a series of conferences we've seen being built up from Oslo Freedom Forum, Baltic Honey Badger. We got uh, Bitcoin 23 in Innsbruck. We got uh, Lugano. Uh, you know, the list just goes on and on. I'm doing Northern Lightning up in Norway. Uh, and, and as far as I can see, it's just high quality all over, but at the same time, really distinctly and uniquely uh, European conferences. So um, I see something happening in this continent. And for a few years, the narrative around Bitcoin in Europe has been a bit negative, like Europe is a lost cause for Bitcoin. We should also plan just to get out and follow Max and Stacey to El Salvador or some shit like this. <laughs> and uh, seeing this sort of turnaround that there's like, there's a huge grassroots on this continent that is not about to give it up to some EU bureaucrats or some Putin warmonger or some shit like this. We're here to build Europe on Bitcoin and it's happening everywhere. And that makes me bullish as fuck. So, yeah. <laughs> Agree uh, with you on that. Because like your talk in Prague was amazing, inspired me. Uh, the, the essence was uh, Europe is too fucking nice to leave it to the tools. Uh, we have to fight for it. and. Yeah, you can't all just leave for South America. Like uh, Europe with Bitcoin will become great again. <laughs> and shout out to to Martin and Matthias. The, the conference was amazing. Um, in this regard, I think 9th September they have another conference, like a, a Czech only conference in Ostrava, uh, Chain Camps, mm. and uh, they like what they pulled off was was really really special. I mean, we got to meet each other there, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm also bullish that Ben, ben made it to Europe. <laughs> and and I, if I can elaborate even more on this, like for me, being having sort of a based lifestyle or whatever, a lot of Bitcoin is taken on a very individual level, like what I eat and how do I relate to my family and so on. But like that is still on a very low time preference scale for me. Like we have to take in ancestry. We have to take in 10,000 years of evolution of language and everything that you are the pinnacle of and that you owe a enormous depth and gratitude to. And it, which is, you know, something where you are just this last little wrinkle on the tree of life. And this challenge is, is coming up and you're from this continent and the last edge of that of that life on this continent. So I feel responsibility to the past, to, to the ancestors, to the bones of their works, to sound all shamanistic about it. But we do, we do owe it to people who have fought these battles and come up with all these concepts from human rights to individual liberties that we sort of pride ourselves on today and consider to be part of our first principles. Like they, they came up with them, they fought for them, and we have the tool to defend them. So let's, let's fucking do it. Yeah. 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 Hey, sorry. <laughs> hey, like not only defend what we have, but also establish a free money, something that we have not have yet. Yes. Hmm. I, I, I was going to echo your guys' sentiment on Prague. That was, I was so impressed with, with uh, what was in Prague there. And like, I mean, the, the, the venue in terms of like what they got on the stage there, like the, 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 the trade room floor, like, I, I was impressed at the size, the quality, and the focus. And when I say the focus, I mean walking around the trade room floor. I was like, "Oh, there's sure to be some riffraff in here, like some some garbage kind of shit coiny." I I didn't really encounter that, and I don't I don't know if you guys did, but like walking around, I was kind of struck by the fact that there wasn't stuff that was just blatantly bad and but that had money 
Um, and, and even the things that I, you know, kind of walked up to that, you know, I, I, I think I even, I went up to, there was somebody that had like NFC, um, like hardware kind of uh, like hardware, uh, tiny cool. thing, um, or, or the, the hammer. No, it was, it was, uh, no, it was like, it was like a, a an NFC, um, tap card type thing. Um, and they were talking about, oh yeah, you know, is this shit. for Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. And then the, you know, like half the, the, the guy half apologized, um, for the fact that they, they could handle other, other coins. He was kind of like, and you can all. You can also do shit coins on this thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of laughed because he, he like knew knew his audience, I suppose. But anyways, like there, the whole point is there wasn't a lot of riffraff there. It was very focused. It was very well done, and I think they did an awesome job. And again, to uh, to uh, hats off to other European conferences. Oslo Freedom Forum was incredible, and you mentioned one that I'm. I'm so sad I can't get to it this year, but Baltic Honey Badger, um, and again, that's put on by Hoddle Hoddle, but uh, it's the time that I did go, it was incredible. Um, I just, it's my daughter's first day of school at a new place, and uh, and I got, you know, family takes priority. Otherwise, I would be in Riga for it, but... Uh, and if I, anyone is curious what Chris means when he says he liked my speech in Prague, you'll get a second opportunity to hear me open a conference in Riga. So come to Boiling Honey Badger to catch the, the follow up. It is it is an I'm awesome third. Time. Yeah. 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 They're 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 incredible. And again, they've done Max and Anna, uh, they're they're doing an awesome job uh getting that going. So anyways, <laughs> highly recommend. Um I wanna ask uh Jan his take on on again Bitcoin in Europe. Are we are we seeing another renaissance here? Are you bullish on European Bitcoiners? Um, I'm very bullish on the Bitcoin community in Europe. Um, I mean, if if I think back two years um, in the German speaking area, we had the first time the Bitcoin Citadella, like a Bitcoin conference. Um, of course, before there were some Bitcoin meetups in some cities, but afterwards it literally exploded. And now um, if I wanted to, I could go like every week somewhere in my area to some Bitcoin meetup and it's it's just amazing uh, what has happened over the last two, two and a half years uh, regarding the Bitcoin community and um, just a lot of people connecting and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very much very bullish on what is going on in the community and what projects uh, evolve from meetups, um, conferences, etc. So, so I awesome. get a message from some guy in Germany in the middle of June asking if I want to join him for some Bitcoin camping trip. And it's on short notice, like a week before or something. So I figure like, okay, it's going to be him and his dog and like wife or whatever, but I'm up for a camping trip. So I say yes, right? And I come out there and the Bitcoin community is so strong that there's like a hundred families in a massive camping lot. They have bought two massive pigs that they are burning without like like full roast, you yeah. know, like they haven't even like cut that shit up. They are they're, they're just roasting that thing. They have two fridges. This is something I learned about Germans, by the way, as a sidetrack. They had two fridges, one for cold beer, and then one on top for beer that uh, had not yet turned cold, but that would be <laughs> that you would keep there to not mix it up with the actual cold beer. Uh, so that, yeah, there were no fridges for food, but we had the pig and the beer. Yeah, anyways, this was like 100 people at a conference of, or an event that uh, brought people from all over Germany. And even though it was such scale, I had never heard of it. Like That's how strong the community is. There's so much stuff going on that even something of that scale just goes completely under the radar. It's just they, they didn't make a big deal out of it and it still got that many people to show up in the middle of summer. It's, um, it's wild. <laughs> that is awesome. I got to give a, a quick shout out to... Uh um the uh satoshi spritz roma uh so i uh, the, a bunch of bitcoiners in rome uh very last minute i i asked if anybody was around in rome because i was gonna be there for a few days and um i got some messages part of it also i was using um orange pill app for like local bitcoiners in and around so i found a, found a couple guys on there but anyways, they, they invited me over to the, they've got a telegram group and everything. And, um, on super short notice, like 
I, I think it was like 15, 20 guys came out and, awesome. uh, and we all just had some, had some beverages and, uh, and hung out for the night just near where I was staying, um, right in, in the middle of Rome, which was awesome. So again, to everybody that, that came out and, and, uh, everybody that kind of put that together, thank you. It was very short notice and I felt very welcomed and, uh, yeah, had, had a few drinks and had some, some good food and it was a good time. So thanks guys. And you made me bullish on European Bitcoiners as well. Uh, so I was glad to hear. Um, yeah, I, I, again, uh, uh, Eric, a, a great, great topic. I think at, it's, it's a microcosm of what's ha happening worldwide, right? Um, it, it goes, it, it'll it'll continue to proliferate everywhere and you're going to have these pockets that just kind of spread out until everywhere has bitcoiners and, and yeah so anyways i'll i'll, I'll leave that there um i'm going to do a rotation and uh again shout out to everybody watching uh give it a share and everything but uh we're going to toss it down to jan and uh i'm going to uh ask I'll just cue you up really simple. Uh, Jan, why are you bullish? Take it away. Yeah. So I'm bullish on Bitcoin, mainly at the moment due to shifts and narratives around Bitcoin, which has like started a little bit with BlackRock um, applying for an ETF, but um, mainly now around Bitcoin, energy, mining, which um, has been represented very negatively in the media, et cetera. And, um, I'm I, I'm getting the feeling, and we are seeing more and more also in in some articles, um, a bit more positive reporting that is not just negative, like um, yeah, Bitcoin is just consuming a lot of energy, but people start to see the benefits in grid balancing, or um, if if you um, have, for example, these landfills that emit a lot of methane gas, which is highly um, damaging compared to CO2 for the atmosphere or climate. Um, and yeah, like this week we, we saw a report by KPMG, one of the big four accounting com companies, which was pretty positive on Bitcoin and ESG. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like in the future, um, with more, more and more of this coming out, um, we'll see positive more positive reporting on that front and um this will hopefully also convince people to look more into bitcoin um which now are like no i'm not going to look at bitcoin because it's like dirty and it's destroying the environment boiling the oceans and um yeah it's um it's quite really great to see um that we um see more developments there and um just yesterday Daniel Batten and Willy Wu, they posted a chart that already 6% of CO2 emissions are mitigated by uh, Bitcoin miners doing um, mining based on methane gas. Um, and that this might go up to 17% if um, uh, let's the, the um, CH4 capital company by Daniel, if they um, start employing more Bitcoin miners in that area. And um, yeah, I'm, that's that's why I'm bullish on uh, the future of Bitcoin that's, here. That's awesome. I uh, Daniel Batten has been posting a lot of great stuff as of as of late. Um, but I mean, I I mean, I'll, I'll I'll maybe ask a question to Jan and and everybody in the panel. But like, I didn't have a very good understanding of energy and and kind of even just how how the grid works and how a grid is balanced before I got into Bitcoin and Bitcoin makes you question a lot of things. It makes you question like what is place, but it takes you down all these other roads. And, you know, I had no idea that you, for a city, you need to have a grid that's operating at maximum capacity at all times to avoid roving blackouts. I had no idea how that's how it worked. And, and that any of the energy that isn't actively used in those situations is just more or less wasted. Um, there's, there's a lot of learning that comes along with Bitcoin that is 
not specifically about Bitcoin. And I'm just curious, did you guys have a similar trajectory where you're like, I know nothing about energy and now it's in my best interest to understand energy? Like where, where are you guys at with that? Oh no, I was the exact opposite. I knew everything about energy. And then I discovered Bitcoin and discovered how complex the topic actually is. And now I realized that I know next to fucking nothing. Uh, but I suppose that is a reflection of the fact that I truly do know more about energy now than I did thanks to Bitcoin, mm -hmm. which does humble you. Yeah, I agree. You, you become sort of like a generalist in many different areas. Like I'm a material scientist, started out like with like the natural sciences approach. And I was fascinated by Bitcoin. And then you learned so much about uh, economy and uh, like the entire like you have so many different topics that you have to have a grasp on before you even begin to understand how beautiful bitcoin is and mm -hmm. uh, yes that's why i as you mentioned before really uh, appreciate the conversations that i have in those local bitcoin meetups mm -hmm. like uh, maybe people that are listening to us now have not yet met bitcoiners in real life uh, go out find a meetup yeah. Uh, if there is none, found a meetup uh, and then like talk to many different people and get like different points of views. And yeah, the, the way into the rabbit hole is different for each and every one of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see um, the the narrative around Bitcoin's energy <coughs> change how people think about energy. Because I think what I found a lot is that, you know, uh, uh, the tangential topics that matter to Bitcoin, Bitcoiners come to Bitcoin for whatever reason, and they start to realize kind of the 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 truth about what what these related topics are, and it's a slow process. Oh, the money's broken. Oh crap! And then and then you know always in the back you kind of hear oh well, but it le it uses so much energy, and the people that take the time to actually investigate that. Um, quickly realize like, oh, wow, this actually Bitcoin fixes this. Um, and, and, you know, that, that, that trope actually rings true in a lot of instances. And I, I think right now you're seeing the Bitcoiners once again, kind of understanding something prior to the rest of society <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin, the money is broken. Okay. A lot of people understood that. You, when's the last, like prior to 2020, you rarely heard the term, if ever, fiat. Now it's, you hear it, it all. It used to be a car brand, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always, it's, now you hear it Why all. Why the do time. these Bitcoiners hate us so much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, again, topics like, like inflation and monetary debasement and and fiat currencies these were things that nobody ever really discussed or or understood and now it's becoming like wow they're like the money printer go burr meme that that's not a bitcoin thing like i mean it is but like it wasn't just bitcoiners that rallied around that meme um and i think you're gonna see that same proliferation of knowledge when it comes to energy where people are like yeah but you know just because we can get energy from from one thing or the other, like what is the most efficient energy? And like you know, what if you're worried about um, if if you're worried about emissions and what kind of emissions are they? And like what is Bitcoin doing in that realm? And like if what's the difference between plugging in my electric car and plugging in an S19? Mm. Oh, it's on the same grid. What is the difference then? So like, you know, that that's so I think there's going to be a lot of great questions that once again, Bitcoin, Bitcoin brings to light for average people down the line. It's going to be great. And and I think it's generally what you said, like Bitcoin is here are again early thinking about how mining can be used in certain instances. Um, I mean, reality is if we are moving towards solar energy, wind energy, et cetera, we have a lot of peaks. Um, then sometimes when demand is there, energy is not there. So we have to store energy, et cetera. And um, there's so many possible um, applications for Bitcoin mining and grid balancing, possibly mm -hmm. um, grid stabilization, um, taking out excess energy, et cetera. And, um, 
at the yeah. moment, it seems like only Bitcoiners are working on that, and um, many people are not even in the space, not realizing uh, in the energy um, space, not realizing um, that there might be at least in parts a solution here um, mm -hmm. to some of the issues that will arise in the future um, in yeah. energy production. Yeah, shout out to uh, shout out to Rand in the chat. He brought up uh, gridless. Uh, in Africa, again, yeah. they're like places that, you know, they, they don't, they don't have like, like the name, they don't have a grid to, uh, to connect to. And so in that instance where you're kind of cut off from everything, you know, and you have no energy, then, uh, getting electricity to people for the first time using a solar array or something like that, um, locally in sub-Saharan Africa makes a whole lot of sense. And then when you have access, you're also mining Bitcoin. Um, you can basically build out that local grid um, and have a buyer of last resort before you actually build out other grid lines mm -hmm. to to local customers. And so that in those instances makes a ton of sense. Um, and uh, but I mean, we 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 only use like a tiny percentage of all of the energy that we produce worldwide and the rest is waste like like high double digit and like. I'm talking about like, I think it's like a third or less of all energy that's produced is, is used and the rest is literally just lost. Yeah. lost. Mm -hmm. And so like Bitcoin could literally, <laughs> like we could, we could, what, like hundred X our, our energy consumption, it could all be waste energy and it wouldn't have an effect on, on how much energy needs to be produced. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, Jan, that you said uh, you 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 kind of started with a, a a macro focus, but you're you're also diving now down the energy rabbit hole and down the mining rabbit hole, and that's you're looking to kind of expand out to and and focus in on that. And I think it speaks to the power of Bitcoin being able to uh, uh, expand and and uh, expand somebody's horizons, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, with that, gentlemen, uh, I'm going to do a final rotation here. Uh, now, uh, Eurodale, I know that uh, you have a tap out happening uh, in a couple of minutes here. Uh, so um, as as you do tap out, you, you can you can listen for a couple of minutes if you need to. Uh, no worries. But uh, I'll just give you a, a farewell before you do. And thanks for being part of the panel. Um, I was glad to have you here and, uh, and keep doing what you're, what you're doing. Um, do you want to say any, any final words before we dive into the last topic? Just the same thing, uh, Ben. Thank you so much for having me and keep doing what you're doing. You are fucking awesome. Uh, I'm going to stay and hear what uh, Chris has to say, but I won't be able to partake in the conversation. So <laughs> I'll just wave off when, when I've heard uh, Chris's reason to be bullish this, awesome. uh, this week. Awesome. All right. Well, Chris, there's your cue. I'm going to yes, set you up here. Why are you bullish, man? Yeah. So my reason for being bullish taps directly into this energy topic. Like just uh, two days ago, we had our first uh, advisory board meeting at TerraHash, which is a newly found think tank in Germany, where we have as one of the biggest focus is the energy um, topic in Bitcoin, because Bitcoin does not have an energy problem. Uh, we generate like 170,000 terawatt hours of energy. And as you mentioned, like a third of that is wasted anyways. Like there's so much stranded energy and it's only ever going to be more. And it's wrong to assume that we would ever like consume less energy. Like as society progresses, we need more energy. We need cheaper energy. And Bitcoin is such a driving force for that. And um, Mining right now is done mostly in the United States, in Russia, Kazakhstan, China, and not really in Germany, uh, because like where I live here, I have like I pay like over forty cents a kilowatt hour. So yeah. <laughs> I think mining the hash price right now is like at six, seven cents. Uh, doesn't make that much sense for me to plug in like even an S nine like to uh, to heat an apartment. It's very difficult. But um, the, the founder of TerraHash is a, a German businessman and he has like a large company who's the manufacturer like uh, injection molded plastic components. And he had the vision of using the stranded, the, the, the heat that is generated from these miners to uh, in his industrial processes. And he built like a 
megawatt uh, photovoltaic array on his on his uh, roof and um, really uh, put money where his mouth is and started an energy laboratory where he's actively researching with a team of scientists uh, the best ways to um, form this concept and then have sort of a black box that can be put into different like other companies to have like utility companies in Germany to have like other industrial processes where like we have renewable energy, but sometimes on the weekends we do not manufacture any products. What do we do with this energy? Or we have like, uh, we know how much energy we need. And if we were to build our photovoltaic array um, to that dimension um, and then the sun doesn't shine, we have too little renewable energy and we have to buy something. But what if we build bigger and then account for that um, the peak load we can just grab off with like mining rigs. All these things, uh, much more complex than I just portray them. I, I thought I knew how mining on the, would work, but on, on Thursday I, I toured the energy lab and talked to the guys there and there are so many uh, variables. Uh, some you can't even control. Uh, some like uh, a lot of the, the research re right now is um, in even figuring out precise data points because what the manufacturer of an ant miner or what's miner tells you is not necessarily what kind of power draw it does. And there's like so many different things, but with TerraHash and Jan is also a representative of that brand. Um, we're trying to build this out in Germany and go to like, yeah, utility companies and tell them, hey, give Bitcoin data centers a try because we learned really very quickly mining is like they, they hang up. <laughs> they don't want to hear that word. <laughs> Bitcoin or data centers are the way to go. <laughs> is, is Bitcoin data center the, uh, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the blockchain term for this era or uh, this epoch of Bitcoin? Like, is it, will it? <laughs> It makes the pill go down easier. Yeah, maybe we have to package it in the Web Five. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's interesting. But I mean, the, the if you can get the message through, if you can, if you can, however you need to say it, if you can simply say, "Hey, you have an energy problem. You have an energy problem, and this solves it." Doesn't matter what the hell it is it solves like a major sticking point of, Hey, we've got too much capacity and, and we're wasting, we're wasting energy. And, uh, it would be great if we had a buyer of last resort and now you do, right? Like that, that's what it solves. Yeah. So that is something that we learned or what, what uh, Terra has is trying to achieve to, um, be the appro first approach to these kind of industries that because Bitcoin is, it's a teenager, it's 14 years old. It's like it, it, in its infancy and um, there's not, at least to my knowledge in Germany, any um, yeah, business that can tailor a solution to you or sell Bitcoin mining in such a way that people with the means to build like a photovoltaic or like some, some type of renewable energy source into their yeah, production process mm -hmm. that they would then go out and say, oh, let's start Bitcoin mining. Because they, most of the time, they're not yet Bitcoiners and they don't want to do like, take care of those mining rigs or all those things. But what they want to do is like a solution to their problem. And this black box is definitely Bitcoin in our opinion. And it just needs to be not only packaged nicely, but executed well. And we have like a great team. Like, uh, I don't know why I'm on the advisory board like this. I'm really heavy hitters like <laughs> Holger Wolf and Alex from Frankenberg. Like, they, they manage with their um, like high tech uh, founders, um, like it's a private public um, venture that funds like in the hundreds mm -hmm. of millions uh, uh, of, of, of different startups. And like Holger Wolf has like a big um, software company. So TerraHash tries to solve like finding a product that is packaged nicely. You have the software, you have the architect, like the entire product is then able to be you know, transposed into like certain different industries. And um, yeah. that's what we do. And yesterday was the first kickoff meeting and I'm so bullish and I'm really excited, not only for yeah, Germany, but like the general future of Bitcoin and how it can fix <laughs> certain things, <laughs> maybe everything, but yeah. <laughs> Jan, I've got a, a question for you. Um, 
so I, I've heard uh, I, I've, I've heard a few people say that that um, eventually energy companies just become Bitcoin companies or vice versa. Bitcoin Bitcoin miners just become energy companies. Do you think that will be true? Do you think that this this division right now of oh we're we're an energy producer and then we get my uh, like a mining company to be our solution or or vice versa or do you think that one kind of just becomes the other or is it going to be a mix of both like if if you had to guess what what trajectory do you think we're on Mm, that's that's a good question (laughs) hard to answer Mm -hmm. but um i think in the long run it makes sense that energy companies start to deal more with bitcoin mining and start using that in one way or the other um, in the energy grids, particularly if we long run want to go more like also decentralized on energy production. um, And then you have more like the local um, peaks and demands of energy. Um, So I think at least to some extent, it makes sense that companies merge or as you said bitcoin com- mining companies become energy con- companies um yeah yeah or or acquire energy companies. other way around yeah <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll acquire the ones that refuse to uh get bitcoin data centers right <laughs> yeah in the future we either buy bitcoin or we mine it like there will be hodlers and there will be people that actively mine it and there's gonna be some arbitrage in between but Energy companies will probably be the first to really jump onto that because we have so much potential and renewable energy, like the sun will never shine at night. Like (laughs) there will be peaks. And it's like in Germany, when we have a lot of peaks, we are shutting down energy supply and um, those guys running the windmills or solar farms they then get compensated by by the government because they had to shut down and i mean yeah it's insane it's, like last year it's alone crazy yeah they like, like no, two years ago like in 2021 like germany or german taxpayers paid over 800 million euros for wind turbines to be still like yeah. they're not generating energy we even paid them and it was in 2021 when like energy prices were like sort of okay then since then they've yeah. risen by like 30 40 percent so like i expect those numbers from last year to be even higher and it just doesn't make any sense like yeah you can't have a data center there because you need like a a like um internet connection and germany doesn't have that <laughs> i can guarantee you <laughs> that but bitcoin mining like with a yeah. phone you can like create a, a valid nonsense on the block mm. like just put like a bitcoin miner in a localized wind farm yeah so the big question there remains still at least for me, um, that miners have to run for a certain time to be profitable. And that's still, for me, a bit open for discussion in what instances it really works. Like, um, but uh, yeah, certainly in that area, it might be a solution. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, and I'm wondering, I, I mean, I, I get the feeling that that the most the most kind of open free market places will hone in on this first. But we are seeing, you know, so, some of that, you know, some of the opposite of that in places like El Salvador, where you know you have you have a, a an administration that that has recognized Bitcoin. So I'm I'm curious, like if places like that also become like, there's obviously a lot of scrutiny there still globally, but like how it, it, it a little bit amazes me when, when you, you can just bring up the numbers from the people that have done it so far and to, to not have literally everyone doing it already. Like, like if, if you have waste energy, it it kind I'm kind of dumbfounded that you you wouldn't just start rolling out pro programs like this right away. That it took 14 years to kind of even notice mm. for a lot of people. Um, and it, I mean, it's still very early stages of this. But like, how, how much? 
positive information do you think a lot of these energy companies need to see? Because I mean, you guys are saying that you can't even say the word mining. And, and even, even though you can show data and be like, this is what it's doing. Like what, what needs to happen here? Yeah, right now the, the, the topic is tainted a little bit because there's a lot of fud in the media, but you can see like the sentiment, uh, the connotations, they are changing. Um, as soon as like Fidelity, BlackRock and all those big uh, funds who have a lot of media outlets probably in their pockets through one way or another and suddenly they publish much more nuanced articles about Bitcoin um, that will change. But uh, those that don't need to uh, have a newspaper article tell them that those people, they will be earlier uh, and they will beat them to the punch and then mm. figure this out. And it's not that easy. Like uh, there are a lot of different numbers. Like we are crunching them at Terrahash as we yeah. speak, because as Jan said, miners have to run a certain percentage for this to be uh, profitable but mm -hmm. all those things can be uh, figured out and are being figured out and whoever comes first will win yeah and i, I think um what Terras is doing now and if we can prove that under certain conditions bitcoin money makes sense and more the more and more of those projects um are implemented in in the real world and we can show like hey it actually works and it makes sense to at least look at it even for a big energy company um i think that's important like to bring out the data show real world examples that work because um then they might actually be convinced to um at least look at it and then think about if that's something for them to implement um yeah, yeah. like so. the first rule of film school uh, show don't tell if you build it they will come you can yeah. like, yeah. once this starts rolling and uh yeah that's again why we're bullish in germany yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly awesome all right well gentlemen i'm going to start rounding out here uh what i'd like to do just and i would do this every show um near the end just i'd like to get a quick round of any final thoughts anything that you didn't get to get off your chest um and then also uh a recommendation and so when i say recommendation it could really be anything um it could be uh, if, if you have like a, uh, you know, a, a video or a podcast or, or a book or, um, you know, an article or, or even when it comes down to an app or, or something to try or, or just a bit of advice from a personal experience, anything that you think might be useful for people watching that you'd like to throw out there, I will, I'll go first. So I'll give you guys a, a second to think, but, um, in, in terms of final thoughts, um, Again, when it when it comes to uh, uh, Eric's er earlier topic and and chatting with you guys over here in Europe, um, to me, the the my final thought is that Bitcoin is is proliferating in these these cool little pockets everywhere, and we're seeing more and more of it. Like like Eric was saying, there's there's a meetup everywhere. There's, there's people everywhere now in every corner of the globe. And I can just kind of walk into whatever city or town and, and probably find a good handful of Bitcoiners that I can, you know, chat with. And, and we're seeing that also in industry, like energy. Um, we're seeing that kind of all over the place in politics. And, it's, and Bitcoin is just kind of, it's planting these little flags everywhere and then spreading from there. And um there's been no shortage of seeing that while I've been on my travels. And that's exciting to me. Um, in terms of, uh, in, in terms of recommendations, I'm going to go back to my early, earlier topic of, uh, of how we're in the early stages of finding out that even the U S government can't control Bitcoin. Um, I, my, my call to action for everybody, that's going to be my, my uh, recommendation is once again, uh, go up, go out there and learn how to be a little bit more self-sovereign. So figure out where you're at right now. Hopefully you're self-custing Bitcoin and you maybe have a, a device that you use for cold storage. If you're there, fantastic. Um, and then maybe look at what next steps are. So maybe you uh, don't like the idea of somebody telling you that you have Bitcoin and confirming all your transactions for you. So your next step might be looking into running your own node. Or um, 
maybe you don't like the idea of, uh, of, of not having privacy, well, maybe look into using CoinJoin or some other privacy tool. Um, whatever it may be, look towards the next steps in your Bitcoin learning journey. Um, run a node, verify your own transactions, uh, use tools that allow you to transact freely, learn how to download a Bitcoin wallet that isn't on the app store, things like that. Um, you can always level up uh, a little tidbit of knowledge to make you state resistant, we'll say. Uh, anyways, that's that's going to be my recommendation. So um, I'll toss it down the line again, gentlemen, whether it be a uh, final thought, recommendation, whatever, whatever you got, throw it at me. I'll, I'll toss it to Jan first. Uh, any final thoughts, anything you'd like to toss for people to check out? Uh, final thought, um, we already did that topic, community. So just go out there, meet Bitcoiners in person. Um, yes, Twitter is great. You get a lot of information, but very often it's only the very extreme opinions. And so um, I cannot really recommend to go out there, seek a meetup, meet with people. And it's, it's very nice um, chatting to Bitcoiners and exchange ideas. Um, it's very, very productive and yeah. Awesome. And besides that, going back to my topic, I, I would recommend checking out the articles by Daniel Batten on Bitcoin mining and energy. Um, it's it's very interesting and might also help you if, if you're confronted with someone skeptical about Bitcoin and energy consumption, just to give some arguments why it maybe is not so bad beyond it's fine if it's waste in energy because it's worth it. Um, yeah. Awesome. And uh, for people looking for Daniel Batten, his Twitter handle is at D-S-B-A-T-T-E-N. So D-S-B-A-T-T-E-N. You can find articles and all his information there. So awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Young. Uh, Chris, I'll toss it to you as well. Final thoughts, recommendations. Go ahead. Yeah, recommendations. Uh, get your coins into self custody. <laughs> the more people that are in self custody and don't leave their corn on some exchange, we will get closer to the true price of Bitcoin. And don't sell your Bitcoin to Michael Saylor. He has enough. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you out there, if you are a business owner, or if you know somebody who is like a business owner and he has like the intention of building out like a renewable energy source um, and willing to take a chance, approach us at terrahash.space, send us an email, we read them all and we'll have a look if we can maybe integrate a Bitcoin data center in your mm -hmm. facility. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I love to hear it. Uh, where, where can people find uh, Terrahash? Terrahash.space is the website or Terrahash underscore space on Twitter. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, awesome, guys. Uh, thank you both so much for being here and uh, hat tip to Eurodale for joining us as well. Uh, I appreciate the conversation. It was a lot of fun. Thanks to everybody that's in the chat. And uh, gentlemen, you're welcome back anytime. Have a great uh, rest of your evening. You too. Thanks for having us. Check out Between Two Asics. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. See you guys later. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, uh, if you can, like, subscribe, share, all those things. They help a ton getting this content in front of more eyeballs. Uh, if you want to help out the show in another way, you can, of course, hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below. Uh, and all the links are in the show notes. But uh, as a reminder, those were Hollow Hollow, CoinKite, Cedar, of which Chris was on here, uh, Nunchuck, and start nine. Uh, you can also hit up my website. Uh, you can go to btcsessions.ca. There you'll find a ton of free information, but you can also book me for one-on-one -on -one sessions if you need some hand-holding, uh, setting up your hardware, figuring out lightning, whatever it may be. Uh, give me a shout. Um, you can uh, book me for a one-on-one -on -one online session. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, on the same website, btcsessions.ca, there's a little tab here that says tips. That'll take you to my own uh, BTC Pay server and you can uh, drop some sats there. Uh, you can do whatever. You can buy me a coffee. You can help me uh, uh, run my node infrastructure. Uh, you pay for streaming, uh, help me with hardware, all that kind of stuff that helps me run the show. Um, and much appreciated for everybody that that hops over there and, uh, and does that. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. 
Thank you guys so much again for being here. Um, have a wonderful week, uh, weekend. I'm sure I will be seeing you soon. And uh, and the news will be coming at you tomorrow. I've had a shift in schedule, of course, uh, with uh, being overseas and, and coordinating with Nigo. But we still have the news coming to you tomorrow as well. Anyways, guys, have a great evening uh, wherever you may be. See you guys next time for your daily session. Hold the Bitcoin.